Hello, everyone. My name is Isela Rosales. I am a graduate of the class of 1997 from LCLN High. So I am dating myself here, but do want to mention that I am part of the first graduating class of LCLN. So it's very a very special opportunity for me to be here and speak to you and the rest of the student body currently at LCLN High. I was asked to choose a couple of questions to speak on, and there were three that really stood out to me that I wanna cover over the next few minutes. And one of the first ones is, what can current high school students do to prepare for a career in my field? So to give you some background, I am currently a managing director at a company called Bridge Investment Group. I work in the San Francisco Bay Area and my company is headquartered in Salt Lake City with offices in New York, Atlanta, and Orlando. My company is a real estate company, so we buy and fix up apartment buildings, office buildings, even senior living communities around the country, as well as build new buildings in a lot of our favorite cities. My role at the company has actually been twofold. So for the last few years, I've been a senior sales executive at the company, which basically means I go out and try to find investors to come and invest in the real estate investments that my company is making. What we typically do is actually organize a portfolio of real estate investments, and I am looking for investors that are interested in putting money into those portfolios. And what that has required is actually years of building relationships with those potential investors before they're ready to make that commitment. My second job at the company actually is a new one, and it really became an opportunity for me just this year in 2020. I was asked in April if I would create and lead the company's environmental, social, and corporate sustainability program. That sounds like a lot, and I can tell you that it has been. Basically, uh, I am going to be looking for ways that my company can become more environmentally conscious, can also be more aware and responsive to important social issues like diversity, like inclusion. We've obviously had a lot happening in our world, especially these last few months, and there's been a lot more awareness, and we're certainly wanting to take part in that. And respond uh, actively and appropriately in all areas. So all that to say that I have a very unique job today or rather jobs and my career has also taken a very unique path. So the advice that I generally will offer to people is not so much here's one job and you make an entire career out of it, but rather there are actually multiple jobs that you might have and your career really is what you make of it. So I would actually define my second job at the company as an opportunity for me to really reinvent myself. I've been a sales professional for a very long time. And because of some of the projects that I've been involved in, a lot of them self-initiated, the senior people at my company tapped me on the shoulder and said, would you be interested? and taking on more responsibility. Yeah, that does mean more work, but it also means a really cool chance to do work that I otherwise would not have been involved in. So that leads me to another question that I think is very important, which is what would be the advice that I would give to students like you, to youths uh, around the country? And I actually wanna answer that with three words. First word that I want to really impress on you is curiosity. Over my life, I can tell you that I've been asked what motivated me to do something. Where did I find the drive to reach my goals that honestly initially wouldn't even have seemed possible or were on my radar? And when I really think about it, my answer comes back to curiosity. When I was in high school, I can tell you that I was really curious to know what the world looked like beyond Santa Rosa, California. I wondered about when I would actually get to travel out of the state or even go to places like Europe, South America, see how others live, the food that they eat, 
and even get the chance to see some really impressive historical sites. And with my reflections and all of this, I can also say that it was my curiosity to want to break the cycle. Uh, when I think back to the things that I was able to achieve, now behind a lot of those things are obviously, and maybe not so obvious, there were actually a lot of setbacks, there were failures, there were plenty of times that I was told no, but I was just so curious and willing to break the cycle to do something different than say my parents or some of my relatives who have been working for so many years of their life, working really, really hard. And I felt they never quite had that same curiosity that I did. And at the end of the day though, most of these opportunities that I ended up creating for myself because of the curiosity uh, were ones that, um, again, I pursued on my own uh, and they seemed to come back to me more and more. So that would be one word that I would leave with you is curiosity. The second one is optionality. And I say that because like anything else in life, isn't it better to always have two or three options than just one? I know that when I was growing up and even throughout my youth and adulthood, I've heard people say, well, I just don't have other options. This is the only path that I can take. And while it may seem like that is really the only option a person has at that time, I really believe that a lot of it has to do with how they choose to look at a particular situation. I think it's always great to have a set of goals, to be focused on them, to strive for them. However, it's also equally important to build into that uh, good options for yourself so that when you do have to make a decision and the decision might be, do I want to go to college? Where do I want to go to college? What do I want to be when I grow up? Those are all very big questions and you don't necessarily have to have all the exact answers right away, but if you're able to create some strong options for yourself, then you can start to see uh, your path, your avenues a lot differently. So I can also tell you that creating the optionality is a great skill that you'll really utilize throughout your entire life. The third word that I wanna leave you with, and that is resiliency. And I'm sure that you've heard your parents, your teachers, pretty much any adult tell you that life isn't easy and it's only gonna get harder as you grow older. And I'm here to tell you that's the truth. Uh, but I'm also here to tell you that one of my secrets has been resiliency. And basically what that means is being tough and being able to bounce back when you hit a challenge, when you face something in your path that really seems like it's going to set you back or keep you from doing something that you really want to do. And as I mentioned, often hearing the word no to something that you really feel is a goal or a pursuit uh, that you want to achieve. And so with resiliency, you're able to bounce back from situations that otherwise may have completely taken off of taken you off the path that you want to be on. And it's it's not easy, but let me tell you, if you have that in you, there's just so many other things that you can do and doors will open for you. So with those parting remarks, I do want to share with the student body that I would love to be a resource for you. I am on social media, so don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, you can find me pretty easily. I think there's not too many Isela Rosaleses out there in the world, certainly only I think one that's ever graduated from LCL and High. So find me on LinkedIn, find me on Facebook. I look forward to hearing from you and best of luck. Take care.